Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video series, I'm demonstrating how you can host an email server and a website on a Raspberry Pi for free, including how to develop that website and how to deploy it automatically with a continuous integration pipeline. So please do check out the playlists on my channel where I'm organizing my video series into these four sections. Okay, let's get going with this video. So this should be a familiar site. If you've been following my video series through, we've been ticking these points off sequentially. And as you can see, we've been making some very good progress through our list. At this point, we have a functional email server which can send and receive emails. And we've proven that it can send an email already by using the Telnet tool in an earlier video. We've also secured our server against some forms of spam and malicious use. So we're in a great place at this point, but we've still got some work to do. In this video, we're going to do two things. We're going to first prove that our IMAP server is running correctly using the Telnet tool, similarly to how we did it previously. It's very important to perform this connectivity test at a few critical stages. And now that our new IMAP server is running in the form of Dovecot, it's a great time to break out Telnet again and check that we can use this IMAP server to access our inbox. Secondly, we'll enable TLS encryption on our IMAP connection so that communication between our postfix email server and our email client, whatever that may be, Outlook or Thunderbird, for example, can be encrypted. In the previous video, we disabled plain text authentication, which is a great first step. But now we need to ensure that SSL, or more correctly, TLS encryption is set up for the connection. So we're getting very close now to having this all up and running. So without any further ado, let's head over to my desktop and let's get started. Okay, here we are over on my desktop as usual with my PowerShell ready to go. I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi using my alias Pi as per usual. And I'm going to clear my screen. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is something that really should have been done in the last video. And that is I'm going to restart Dovecot and Postfix. And this is because in the last video, we made some changes to the Dovecot and Postfix master configuration files, which means those changes won't have taken effect on our servers until we restart the services. So the first thing I'm going to do is restart those services as follows. sudo service dovecot, we'll start with dovecot, restart, enter. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it for postfix. Okay, so let's just check they're both running as they should still. And we do that by typing in sudo service dovecot status. There we go. So seeing the green active uh, status here tells us that it is running as it should and there are no errors. Let's do the exact same thing with postfix just to double check everything is still running as it should be. Excellent, they're both running exactly as they should be so we can now carry on. So I'll clear my screen. Okay, so now that we know that our IMAP server and our Postfix server are both running correctly as services, we need to check that they're both configured correctly and will function as we expect them to. We're going to use a Telnet tool, as mentioned, to check our inbox. That way, we know that the IMAP server is working because we're able to connect to the inbox and see how many emails are in there. Now, we could do this straight away, but I think it's nicer if we use Telnet again to send an email from our own email server to our own email server. That way we will see that some emails have been received in our inbox. It's a further test to make sure things are working as they should. So let's do that first. Let's use Telnet as we have previously, but this time let's send an email from our server to our server. Okay, so to do that, we first need to invoke Telnet. We do so as follows, we type in Telnet followed by our network, which is localhost in this case, because we are SSH'd into our Pi, which is our email server, followed by the port that Postfix our email server is running on. Press enter. Now we need to provide an ehlo command to identify our email server. This needs to be a valid domain since we increased the security on our server. So I'm going to use my own domain. So I suggest you use yours. 
So I'm going to type in single hyphen entity entity dot com. Okay. The next thing it needs is the sender's email address. So because I wish to send an email from my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to type in mail space from colon space and then the user Pi because I know that Pi is a user on my Raspberry Pi who has an email account because they have the mail dear directory structure. I'm going to then type in at followed by my domain, single hyphen entity dot com. Okay. The next command is the recipient's uh, email address. So I'm going to type in rcpt space two colon and I'm going to use the exact same email address because I wish to send an email to myself. So I'm going to type in pi at single hyphen entity dot com. So yours should be pi at followed by your domain. Press enter. And if you recall, the next thing to do is to provide the email content. So I'm going to type in data followed by subject colon. And this is the subject of the email and it can be anything you like. This is just the subject of the email that you will receive. So it could be anything. I'm going to type in my first email in my own inbox. Enter. The next line is the body of the email, so it can be anything. I'm just going to type in cool exclamation mark. And then if you recall from the last time to finish the email data, you just press a period followed by enter. So that's done. The email has been sent. So I'll now quit out of Telnet and I will clear my screen to be nice and organized. So now we're going to use Telnet again, but this time we're going to connect to our inbox. Uh, it's slightly different this time. Postfix is listening to port 25, so we've always used port 25, but the IMAP server Dovecot is listening to port 143. So let's do as follows. Telnet, localhost, and this time we're going to type in 143. So you can see it looks a bit different. And that's because Telnet is actually using our IMAP server this time. And of course, that's exactly what we need to use to access our inbox. We're not sending an email, we're hoping to access our inbox instead. So to do this, let's type in A. This is because we use the alphabet uh, to define the sequence of commands. So it'll go A, B, C with each line. So we start with A and then we type in login. And then in quotes, and it does have to be within quotes, I want you to type in your username. So in my case, it's going to be Pi because my user on the Raspberry Pi with the email account I wish to access is Pi. So there we go. And then a space. And then I'm going to type in my password. So obviously for this video, I have changed my password to my Raspberry Pi temporarily, but yours will be here as follows. You will be typing in your real password. So your real password will be here. Okay. Now I've actually changed my password to your real password here. So this will work for me, but you need to actually type in your actual password within those quotes. Press enter. Great, it tells me that I'm logged in as you can see. So to provide the next command, I need to type in B and then I'm going to say select inbox. Enter. There we go, excellent. So in my case, I've got a few emails. You can see there are four that exist and two of them are recent. Now you probably will have two here, not four. Or you might even have one. Um, and the reason for that, well, the reason it might differ from mine is because I had a trial run of this uh, before I recorded the video. So I have more emails in my inbox, but you should see basically a number here, which is non-zero. And that means that your email was successfully sent using your postfix email server and has been received by your postfix email server and that your IMAP server is allowing you through your username and password to access your inbox. So that's excellent. So the last thing to do is to type in C log out. Excellent. I'm going to clear my screen to be nice and organized. Okay, so we've confirmed now that our IMAP server is functioning as it should, and that once SSH'd into our Raspberry Pi through our local network, we're able to use it to access our inbox. But our IMAP connection to our email server isn't currently encrypted, and we need to make sure that it is, particularly when we go and have external connections to email clients. To make that connection encrypted, we're going to edit the Dovecot master configuration file. 
This is a configuration file we have edited previously, so this should look quite familiar. So I'm going to type in using nano as my text editor as follows, sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash dovecot forward slash conf d forward slash 10 hyphen master dot conf. So that should be a very familiar uh, path to this file. So I'm going to press enter. Now we're looking for the IMAP login line and it's just here. And we're going to make some changes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete everything from where my cursor is now to the closing curly brackets. And I find the easiest way to do that is just to use control K, which cuts a line out repeatedly. So I'm going to type in control A, control K, sorry, control K over and over again. I get my words right until I'm left just with what you can see here. And now I'm going to uncomment the line that says port equals one, four, three. There we go. So now that I've uncommented that, I'm going to save it. What this is saying is I want IMAP to listen to port 143. This is important for external connections. I'm now, now that I've saved it, I'm now going to exit this. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make SSL a required feature as opposed to optional or off. I'm going to make sure it is required. And this is done in the SSL configuration file of Dovecot. So similarly to the above, we're going to navigate into the Dovecot conf d uh, folder and we're going to edit a configuration file. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash dovecot slash conf dot d forward slash and now it's going to be 10 hyphen ssl dot conf. Okay, I'm going to press enter. Okay, so as you can see near the top of this configuration file, SSL is set equal to yes by default. Now it never used to be. The SSL configuration file for Dovecot used to have TLS support set to no by default. Um, so we're quite fortunate that it's set to yes. However, we're going to go one step further. We're going to delete yes and we're going to type in required instead. This is to prevent it being optional. We want to make sure that SSL is absolutely required. So it's a nice safeguard against optional encryption. Now, encryption using start TLS, which we will talk about in a later video, is actually optional and we have to be a little bit careful. So I like to make sure that my SSL um, setting here is set to required instead of yes. So change the yes to required and save this configuration file. And we're done. So I'm going to clear my screen just because I like to be organized. And we are finished for this video. In the next video, which you'll be glad to hear is the final configuration video, we're going to use CertBot to retrieve a key and certificate from Let's Encrypt in order to make our TLS encryption a reality. And we're going to point, postfix and dovecot to our certificate and key. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do like the video and please do subscribe to my video course. It's a great way for me to tell if people are finding it useful. I also now have a Patreon account and I have my first patron. So if anybody would like to contribute to my work, I'd be very much appreciative of that donation. So please do go to my Patreon uh, website. Uh, you'll find the information in the description to this video. You don't have to, there's no pressure, you're welcome to use this content for free if you like, but I do intend to create content for patrons only, so if you're interested in that, please do have a look. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.